Okay, so uh, good evening once more. Uh, thank you very much for coming uh, to the gal City Gallery of Prague uh, to the uh, this exhibition called The Words of Jindřich Chalupecký. And uh, uh, tonight we will discuss here uh, one topic which uh, might maybe surprise uh, some, uh, some uh, people in, in uh, uh, the cultural context, and that is the relation of uh, Jindřich Chalupecký as one of the leading theorists and curators uh, of uh, the second half of the 20th century here in um, uh, former Czechoslovakia, and his relation to uh, female uh, art and feminism. And and we will also try to bridge uh, this uh, uh, historical figure and the historical context um, towards the contemporary reality we live and work um, in. And I am happy to welcome here our, my colleague, uh, Karina Kotova, who will moderate the discussion with me, as well as our speakers, uh, who will be introduced by Karina. Thank you. So thank you, ladies, for joining us for this discussion. Thanks to all of you for coming. Uh, so I would like to welcome here Petra Hlaváčková, who is uh, an art historian, curator, and art critic. And uh, she is especially uh, interested in researching architecture, urbanism, and feminist theory. And uh, she also particularly wrote about uh, feminism in the times of normalization and the pre-89 context, which will also be uh, in important for us uh, today in this discussion. Uh, then uh, we have here the artist Maria Lukáčová, who um, studied at the Prague Umprum. She is now um, head of a studio at the FAMO Film Academy um, uh, in, in Prague. And uh, she was also part of the Jindřich Chalupecký Award and is one of uh, uh, established uh, upcoming generation uh, artists working in intermedia and, and, uh, and video. And uh, last but not least, uh, let me welcome Martina Pachmanová, uh, who uh, teaches at the uh, art uh, theory at the Umprum uh, Arts and uh, uh, Design University uh, in Prague. And uh, she is uh, especially uh, focused in her research on gender and feminism in the interwar and post-war uh, period, and also in uh, contemporary uh, art and uh, visual culture, including design. And uh, she also wrote, wrote one of uh, very important texts on femi uh, feminism and Chalupetsky's uh, relationships, uh, relationship to female artists, which we will discuss as well. So thank you for joining us. And uh, Teresa will uh, pose the first question. Thank you. And thank you again for being here with us tonight. Um, so we will start with a short quotation by, from text by, written by Martina Pachmanová for the uh, notebook for art uh, theory and related zone, zones um, about uh, the Chalupetsky relation um, to, uh, to women and female artists. Chalupetsky didn't question the significance of women in contemporary Czech art in his times. I believe we could even say that he essentially admired the so-called female art. However, in his eyes, it could only pass as a political art, as an incarnation of some kind of eternal femininity. Um, so how you, Martina, if you can summarize, and uh, I believe um, uh, Petra has also um, uh, to say about this topic, how you uh, would interpret uh, Chalupetsky's um, notion of femininity or, or feminine um, art, and uh, could we trace some development through time in his like writings and curatorial work? Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are significantly sitting in the so-called library of this exhibition which I'm pointing out for one specific reason. If you had time to read the open books here, you probably must have seen or noticed that there are at least 10 or maybe 15 women artists actually introduced here through the writing of Jindřich Chalupecký, which might be at least one third of all artists 
historical figures introduced in this exhibition, which is actually maybe even more than in a lot of contemporary art exhibitions, right? Um, at least here in this country. So which makes me uh, again think that we really should not think about Hindri Halupetsky outside of uh, the discourse of uh, female or women's art. However, he did strongly distinguish between the word female and feminist art. And what he explicitly rejected is thinking about any kind of ide ideological or constructivist or even social agenda of women artists in the period when he was active, meaning from late 1950s through the end of the 1980s. So in the article that was actually original, the conference paper presented in 2013, if I'm not mistaken, what uh, I try to uh, emphasize is uh, Jindřich Chalupecký's interest in a lot of women artists, including Eva Kmentová, uh, f, uh, f, f, f Věra Janoušková, and many others. And also what I try to emphasize is that he was definitely aware of feminist artists working in that time, 1960s and 70s in the West, um, Western Europe and in the United States. However, he opened like over and over uh, underlined that Czech or Czechoslovak women artists, including for instance, Jana Zelipska, did not or do not need feminist agenda because they're emancipated by themselves in you know, the socialist, uh, socialist political system. So what he, or with what he did link the female art was, uh, the corporeality, the maternity, let's say the everyday mundane world as opposed to transcendental world. Um, I don't know if maybe Petra can add something to uh, this because probably most of you read uh, the, my article that was actually published in the newspaper, published at the occasion of this exhibition. But uh, maybe uh, Petra wants to add something. Yeah, I was just thinking about uh, the some um, huge, con uh, more huge context uh, of socialist reality uh, connected with this question of feminism, uh, especially during nor uh, normalization. And it's a really complex question. So <laughs> I don't know exactly uh, uh, when to start, but uh, maybe um, would we know from uh, very interesting social uh, sociologist uh, researches from last decades? Um, uh, it was also for women uh, in this period. Um, um, really, <laughs> uh, uh, somehow complicated uh, relationship because feminism was really blamed uh, from uh, many sides. Uh, in, in, in Czechoslovakia, uh, from the f official uh, uh, institutions, it was uh, uh, kind of uh, something uh, not really uh, pure or um, right. Uh, it was something uh, uh, connected with some kind of, um, I don't know, um, ideal also ide ideology. Uh, it was uh, a lot of misunderstanding and uh, also a propaganda work uh, against feminism. So it was one side. Another side was also this um, underground or, 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 or uh, non-official scene um, uh, or some un inf uh, like uh, influence because uh, also from this, this non-official um, uh, groups, uh, the femi feminism was something, or presented as something not really necessary and uh, for, for women in Czechoslovakia. And for women it was also the question of being connected with something uh, weak, to go to the site of weakness, and it wasn't uh, very... <laughs> Um, it wasn't uh, for them, um, it, it, you know, 
interesting. So it was a very uh, was a, a lot of uh, you know, a lot of questions and influences, and, and it's really complex problem. But I, I, I think that we will maybe go uh, to to uh, specific um, directions during the discussion. Uh, you both mentioned that uh, feminism was something uh, considered kind of unnecessary or even in, refused, uh, particularly also by Kalupetsky. But at the same time, his writing is full of the, these kind of paradoxes that in a way he says feminism was necess not necessary for uh, Czech artists, but a uh, few sentences later, he would write, yes, but uh, household and uh, family um, activities were kind of drawing them away from, from serious artistic career and, and, and so on. So um, we would uh, like to uh, again quote a little bit to be able to, um, to discuss this further. Uh, so uh, one of... Um, the famous sentences uh, here where he uh, tries to kind of also distinguish between uh, female and, and male art uh, says, quote, female art is different than that of male. Primary, it is far more related to the private life of the author. Often it is a kind of a diary entry. That is also why it cannot be ideological. It cannot be a program, even if this program would be a female protest or manifestation of femininity. He wrote this in The Soul of the Androgen. So in a way, he really opposes the kind of personalist political statement um, here. And let me continue with, uh, with one more uh, quotation. This kind of permeating of the artistic and human fate is never so strong as when it comes to Czech women artists. They have a place here no less important than male artists, and they don't need feministic programs to achieve that. Elsewhere, they are provoked by accustomed suppression, while in Czech context, this doesn't happen. When it comes to public exposure, female modern artists share similar adversity as male artists. They are held together in a dust-created, friendly union. But, and again, a few sentences later, just when it comes to numbers, there are fewer female artists. Life itself easily draws them away from concentrated creation. So uh, here we uh, see some of uh, these paradoxes, the life itself versus, uh, versus the reality of, of, of female and uh, male artists. Uh, Martina also writes that uh, female artists for uh, Kalupetsky were always with an attribute. They were always attributed as female, as working with the body, as something else, while male artists were the ones with the capital, with the capital A, that didn't need this kind of uh, cl classification. And uh, I was, uh, or we were interested in uh, how much uh, this rejection of feminism by Kalupetsky was informed by his general uh, stand where he usually didn't like to classify art with any of the isms. He also really always tried to highlight uh, how Czech or po uh, possibly Czechoslovak art is different from the art in the West. He, he tried to always uh, work in these uh, dichotomies. And um, to what extent was it more of, of this general mood, as, as Petra was mentioning, in, in the society that might have also really um, uh, prevented the artists that were active then to connect to uh, what was going on internationally in, in feminist movements or women's movements or generally in the kind of empowerment of, of uh, women's art. And uh, I think this is a question again to all three of you, possibly Martina and Petra can, can start, but uh, whoever wants to. So what exactly is the question? So uh, how, um, well, how much this rejection of feminism was influenced by Kalupetsky's rejection of the isms mm -hmm. in general, mm -hmm. and uh, how much it was um, really just uh, this, this timely thing that, that uh, he was, yeah, that he was, he just really did, wanted to deprive the artist of this kind of belonging some or... Implicit, uh, maybe some like um, implicit sexism? 
No, I, I, I definitely don't think so, because I think that in general he really repeatedly was writing in various articles that he does not trust in any theory, we might say ism or ideology, being part of an artistic, uh, artistic activity. And he actually in one text even wrote that uh, feminist art will die out of ideology. That means that he really just did not, he even in a certain way believed that the art behind the Iron Curtain, it's let's say more authentic than the art in Western Europe or in the United States because it exists outside of ideology, which is of course paradoxical, but we have to understand that he was writing and curating show, he was writing about artists and curating uh, shows of, uh, of artists who actually did not participate in the official uh, art, social realism or whatever, or however we can call it in the 1970s and 80s. So, uh, but of course, you know, like no art exists exists in, uh, uh, in an empty space and there is always some kind of ideological context or bias. So uh, I definitely would not call him a misogynist, definitely not. I really truly think that he was deeply interested in uh, female artists of uh, his period, but I think that it was his deep mistrust in any kind of political agenda uh, that would uh, take part in artistic activities, no matter if you're speaking about women or men. So, Petro? <laughs> I don't know what, what to add. Uh, maybe, um, yeah, that, um, mm, I don't know. I don't know exactly how he, it, uh, he, he was thinking about it, but uh, it's true that it doesn't seem to be sexist somehow uh, or like um, it's uh, it's full of stereotypes his texts but there is no this kind of aggressive sexism or something like this which was somewhere else in the society really present you know but not in his text so much but I, I feel there's some uh, misunderstanding still uh, and uh, really pure knowledge about what feminis feminism m means, you know, and so it, this is the question for me always, how it's possible that uh, I was so pure, um, uh, so, uh, so less uh, uh, knowledge about this in, in, uh, during so socialism in, in Czechoslovakia. When you see the discussions, there is one, di one important discussion about the second sex, for example, by Simone de Beauvoir, but it's just few of some this, this kind of uh, uh, events or, or, or uh, dis discussions, and uh, or you, you we know some informations about um, some I don't know the the the, the artist uh, conference in Yugoslavia, for example, where uh, uh, like the East and West femi feminist or uh, uh, not feminist but women artists uh, uh, could uh, meet, and where the discussion was really, really um, uh, alive or really uh, intense because there was a kind of a lot of misunderstandings between these two groups. And so, you know, I think this was really, and, and it's, it's true that uh, that, that period may be uh, what uh, uh, people or women or artists or theoreticians from Czechoslovakia could see or meet. It was some kind of radical, uh, uh, radical position of feminism and it was something really super, like, they were really surprised by this energy and, and, and um, you know, um, this different kind of energy from the side of women they could uh, ever meet in, in Czechoslovak context. So maybe it, it was shocking or, you know, the, these reactions were really negative very often. And you can see it also in the text by Václav Havel or uh, you know, other art, uh, women artists, uh, they really they couldn't see uh, themselves as part of feminist movement. And when I uh, made uh, interviews with um, women uh, immigrated uh, in, uh, for example, in Aust uh, to Austria, 
Uh, I made interviews with two groups of women from these emigr uh, immigrants from 68 and uh, after or in 80s, uh, this Akce Asanace. Uh, it was also <laughs> visible that uh, it was really hard for them to be part of this uh, emancipatory movements in, in the West. I, I found just one from uh, 10 who was really part of the movement and wanted to be part of this because she had really strong experience from the marriage <laughs> with German men <laughs> and she was so shocked by the the different uh, perspective because it was in 68 so for her it was really shocking to be suddenly uh, or the 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 the, the, the uh, the husband uh, wanted her to be more submissive than she was uh, used to be in Czechoslovakia, for example, because the emancipation or the emancipatory politics uh, by the government was really strong. So for women, it was just like a part of uh, uh, normal, nor normality, you know. So, um, yeah, so also for, for these immigrants, it was really hard to become a part of this movement because you know, these reflections in, in uh, Czechoslovakia were very, really negative about the feminist movement. Thank you. Uh, it's a, a really interesting, this, this um, uh, historical context, and let's um, maybe dive even a bit deeper into it. But before that, um, I just um, uh, wanted to ask, because uh, uh, you, Martina clearly spoke about uh, uh, Chalupecki's um, uh, um, negative um, uh, feelings about feminisms or, or other political um, active or activist uh, art. Um, and that I also believe that he truly uh, admired a lot of uh, the female artists. Uh, but uh, at the same time, he still is uh, using this, this category of uh, female uh, or women's art. Um, and maybe just uh, to step aside for a little while, um, I, I'm curious how you now, um, in, in your uh, theoretical or artistic practice, are perceiving this notion or the category of so called uh, female art, maybe uh, Maruška, <laughs> if you can start. What was the question again? I'm oh, sorry, I was thinking about uh, If, if, if uh, uh, the, the category of uh, female or women's art is something uh, um, relevant for you or something what um, you um, perceive as uh, your own category or do you think it's um, overcome yeah, yeah, in the 20th century? Yeah, thank you very much. Sorry, sorry for... <laughs> Uh, yeah, so um, I'm an artist, but I'm also a teacher, and I'm teaching at the Film Academy of, uh, uh, of Prague. And I guess that uh, I also already said that to Karina that I feel that I'm living in a, some really nice uh, feminist bubble uh, where everything is like possible and people are nice and uh, we have a children's room there and there's also a lot of children with us and... Um, you know, and the vibe of, um, um, I don't know, uh, artist existence in Prague for me is really nice. But uh, on the other hand, I'm also part of this fem film industry. And uh, yeah, so, so in this ar artist, ar artist space, I don't feel like there, there's some possibility, or not, not possibility, some, some importance to call it, uh, something like feminist art and some... <laughs> Uh, macho art or something like this because uh, I feel that there is just art and the uh, femininity which I see is in a process of communication and process of being and the space are all around us and I see it in a really in, in, a, in a like a, uh, something which is really nice for us there are some for example children corner or something which is uh, open to people with disabilities or something like this. Uh, so I live in that, uh, but on the other hand, I also have a touch with this film industry and there's nothing of it. So it's really hard, you know, uh, to, uh, to uh, realize that uh, those super different world lives uh, besides and in a one, one time, because in this film industry, there's, you know, huge competitive processing of 
uh, getting money, for example, and uh, everything is in super rush and uh, everything is pretty hard. Uh, so I think that there's r huge, huge importance of something which we called feminism film or art in film industry. So maybe, maybe that's my answer on, it, on that and we could discuss it more, but yeah. Yeah, I would agree that we somehow are creating a bit of a bubble, but at the same time there are many other bubbles where things are also happening differently and this is also why we wanted to, to run this discussion and see where, what are the historical roots and where are we finding ourselves uh, with feminism or, or the question of female artists, if we even are allowed to call them that way uh, these days. And uh, let me still go back a little bit into the historical uh, excourse. And uh, we went into, again, uh, quote um, a bit, this time not, uh, Kalupetsky, uh, but Mariana Placákova, who wrote a very interesting article on uh, Czech, uh, uh, sec uh, basically sexistic uh, languages and uh, practi practices in 1990s. Uh, but uh, this article goes back also to the pre-89 uh, era uh, because the 90s, of course, were very much informed or, or influenced by it. And she thinks about uh, how somehow sexism might have been even forced in the underground or in the unofficial scene because it was seen in a little bit, uh, in a way, as an opposition to the regime, which very much was stressing gender equality, but in very difficult terms. Petra wrote a lot uh, about this. Um, so let me, uh, this is a little bit longer quote, but I would, uh, I would still like to um, bring it up here so that we can uh, we can discuss, it's quite an interesting article, and it also uh, does have a note on, on, on Chalupetsky. Uh, so, the Crusaders' school of uh, pure hum humor without wit, um, we are also exhibiting some of the artists here, definitely wasn't the only part of the unofficial art scene where we can encounter sexism. It was rather a general practice with a wide specter of manifestations. Margita Titlova Ilovsky, for instance, recalls how she came to present her work to the then 70-year-old Kalupetsky in the 1980s. Within the art scene, he was understood as a moral and professional authority. When Kalupetsky saw the photographic documentation of her performances, he presumably said that they were all right, but it would have been better if she was naked on the photos. The depiction of women as a schematic sexual object and the objectification of the female body can be found in Czechoslovak post-war art from the 1960s. Whether it is in Alex Mlinarczyk's mannequins that could, be painted, uh, that could have been painted by the viewers at his 1967 Paris exhibition opening, in Balzar's pop art images of women undressing or his picture diaries of the female body for every day. We also show them here in uh, one of these in the next room. Or even, even in the movie poster designs of that time. Thanks to loosening of the political situation, it became possible again to depict sex sexuality and most of the authors thus saw the visualization of the naked female body as a manifestation of liberty. However, this kind of visual visualization, problematic from today's perspective, was not necessarily understood just as a free gesture by, by the authors. For instance, the work by Irina Cheratsky balances on the edge of misogyny. From the 60s on, he depicts women as gigantic, dangerous animal beings. So uh, we wanted to get back perhaps to Petra um, in, in this case, and uh, uh, we wanted to ask you how was uh, Chalupetsky's uh, take on female art and uh, his refusal of feminism related to this kind of general thought of the time, of the mood in the society. You were already uh, discussing that, but maybe in relation to also this kind of pre-'89, post-'89 development. Um, 
in, in feminism, and then if any of you want to uh, react on how you think these kind of, uh, uh, these kind of roles or positions uh, influence what we understand as, as feminism these days. Uh, so this would be a question, I think, to any of you that want to respond. So the question to me is uh, um, how this sexism was related to the refusal of feminism, you think, or...? Yes, and I always, how it was related, this kind of pre- and post-revolutionary also um, time in, in terms of, of yeah, sexism. expressing <laughs> the sexism. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's it's uh, already or quite a time discussed uh, this this um, uh, um, uh, dissent and underground uh, sexism. It was really strong present presented there very strongly, and um, and it's also changed uh, from generation to generation. And it was also when I uh, talked with my interview with uh, Dada Libansky, who was the, but one of the immigrants I, I, I make, uh, made the interview with, she described me that uh, she is from the generation, uh, the younger generation from the citizen uh, group, and she felt that it was different, you know, that also uh, his husband, uh, Abel Libansky, was more... Um, um, mm, doing uh, homeworks and, uh, con you know, um, connected with the, the, the ho household um, activities. Uh, yeah, uh, but, uh, but the, for example, the generation of Václav Havel, it was different and the sexism was like somehow uh, very strong there, but not in this um, visible and uh, performative <laughs> way how we can see it in 90s and this is the different ma difference maybe that uh, then it was really like visual sexism really strong uh, strong one and uh, uh, maybe this was one of really as, as Mariana uh, wrote there um, the for the artist one of the um, uh, like a manifestation of liberty and freedom, you know, in, in society that they finally can open it <laughs> to totally and, and we can see female body everywhere. Yeah, so I think this is the difference. Uh, but but there, were, there was sexism uh, before also. And was there an other question or is it? Yeah? Okay. Maybe uh, just I'm still like uh, curious because uh, um, as you said, there definitely was uh, more implicit or explicit sexism um, in the un underground or the un un unofficial uh, cultural um, uh, groups um, of which Kalupetsky also was, was part of or was rooted in. Um, and then um, there is this uh, idea of the like um, opposition of the emancipation of, of uh, women or equivalence of sexes two sexes, of course, in the, in the Soviet or, or socialist uh, society. Um, and I'm uh, curious, um, uh, of course, it's a, it's a huge topic, but uh, um, how you uh, uh, perceive it? Um, was it really, you know, like the, this, this uh, proclamatory um, equivalence or emancipation of, of women in the socialist uh, uh, state? Uh, did it also have some dark side on the official, um, in the official realm, or the, the official political or social uh, realm? Um, yeah. Uh I think it's also in the text of Mariana Placáková when she wrote about this, this official uh, articles and or uh, some proclamations of really official uh, giant uh, personalities of uh, the, the the society uh, after the revolution, uh, like Josef Škvorecký, for example. This is really shocking when you can when you uh, read that she somehow is. Um, 
she was des describing in really, really aggressive way uh, the uh, situation around. Um, uh, uh, I just forgot the name of the the sportman. <laughs> Uh, Mike Tyson and his uh, 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 his case was uh, about the rape of uh, the the miss I don't know what and th this article is so aggressive and so de uh, de uh, defying uh, the Mike Tyson uh, act as a, that she could somehow count with it because she is so small and he is so big and. So it is really, really horrible, you know. And and there was also and this 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 men were also part of this new institutions, as the parliament and uh, many many others, and uh, especially Josef Škvorecký was also one of uh, the the people who wanted to. Uh, I don't know what was some um, um, proposition of the new uh, law regarding. Um, uh, regarding um, um, how is it in English? Uh, nezaměstnanost? Uh, unemployment. Unemployment. You know, and this, uh, um, and he suggested to 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 some something like to to take uh, uh, jobs to women because it's not so necessary for women to work; they can be at home. And so this these kind of things were really often uh, suggested in uh, this new institution where were uh, really often just men because uh, women were at home with kids and uh, as I know from many many women really active in descent as for example um, uh, Anna Shabatova she described that she was really really surprised by this new situation because before she was really active because everything was um, uh, happening in, fla in flats, in apartments. So women uh, could be with children and being somehow active in the household and at the same time be, be uh, active in, in, in Charta 77 and this kind of different uh, design groups. And uh, she described uh, in uh, the Bitova Revolta book, uh, she was really surprised because after 89, suddenly she had really sm small ch uh, children and she couldn't, really couldn't, and she doesn't have any possibility to be part of parliament and all these uh, never-ending discussions, you know, because there was any support, any system support or from the other side of, of, of other people. So, uh, so it, was, it was a big difference after 89. Well, maybe just one point, this is definitely one of the ironies of the underground movement of the dissident circles, but I think that we should be really also worried about um, not accepting this kind of polarity that the official system before 1989 really kind of tried to uh, try to fulfill the emancipatory tendencies because, I mean, I was growing up in 1970s and 80s and I think that there is or started to be built some kind of fiction that the socialist culture or even visual culture was absolutely a sexist. I remember a lot of films or literature, very popular official literature from this period of normalization, which was terribly sexist. That's, that's one thing. And also, you know, what was written in some kind of proclamations was not what women during the socialist period, period lived in their real lives. So I think that there is, you know, even dark side about the totalitarian system, which was maybe not as sexist as the, as the dissident circles, but it was definitely like deeply patriarchal. So uh, I think that, you know, it's a very complex question. and. Maybe going back to Halupetsky and going back to art, um, I think we should also just remember, even like speaking about living women artists who are still active on the scene, that most of the women who entered the art scene in 1970s, 80s, or even maybe even 1960s, they themselves felt like their enemy is not patriarchy, but the totalitarian regime. So I think that they did not, most of them probably did not felt misinterpreted by Halopetsky and others who wrote about women artists. So it was kind of mutual 
right? So that was just, you know, something what maybe I think that should be also emphasized and maybe we can go back a little bit just to the art scene, uh, which I'm not saying that we should not speak about the political context, but I think that Kalopetsky and even Julie, uh, Julie Bena's uh, video, which uh, was supposed to be discussed here, actually touches about a lot of uh, issues that I believe really kind of bridge the past, uh, the moment of Kalupetsky's life, but the present. And I think that it might be interesting uh, also to think about how the notion of feminist art or female art as like two, not necessarily contradictory, but two different terms are being used on contemporary Czech art scene. Because I think that there are still a lot of stereotypes, you know, that are associated with feminist art, with female art or women's art, which actually go back to the late 19th century, to the moment when women artists started to professionalize and when a lot of art critics and curators started to think about what it means to be a woman artist. So maybe we can just go back to the term because I think that it's still very heavily associated with a lot of stereotypical notions uh, and are still very or used very much uh, essentialistically just not necessarily in a way how Kalupetsky used them but I think that the term essentialist interpretation of female art is very much present in his writing about women artists of um, uh, his period so maybe maybe Maria can just comment on that how she still kind of understands these two terms she has an experience with them as a living woman artist, feminist artist. Okay, I'm not sure if I... <laughs> maybe, yeah, yeah, definitely I have some um, experience with, for example, stereotypes, but I love to, uh, like, uh, crush them somehow, uh, especially with my boyfriend. <laughs> maybe it's just too personal, but... Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, it was really um, not it, it wasn't at all hard to be like young mother uh, here in our scene because thanks to uh, this Kalupetsky <laughs> society actually and the more other uh, women artists who have already children so I was so super in it but uh, it was really funny to communicate that with my partner who is uh, uh, also in uh, art. Uh, in art uh, bubble, so uh, we broke the stereotypes because we, we share uh, the care, but also we, we uh, usually uh, try to talk with people um, and broke the stereotypes like that we go uh, together to Botox and uh, also to box and do the things which are really, you know, stereotype, stereotype type it not like typically for a woman or for a man so we do that together and then talk about it a lot so uh, I and I guess that there's a really nice discussion uh, about that uh, so but I don't know if I could understand because um, you know I'm in super uh, privileged position uh, that I uh, uh, work with uh, wor with the uh, women um, curators and theorists uh, so I, do, I, uh, I don't use the uh, word feminism at all, but I'm, I am, I'm, I'm super feminist and uh, I work with the term, but uh, you know, I, um, I think that the, the goal of uh, feminism is uh, that we, all of us will have uh, some code, uh, codes of feminism in our acting and there will be no feminism at all. So, <laughs> so um, I, I guess that, uh, you know, uh, it's just utopy. It's just utopy to have uh, feminism in uh, our lives and to have a care and uh, those things. And I just want to say that um, I cooperated with young students at, at FAMO and uh, they are like, uh, they are my utopy because they work together and then they are not individuals and they just cooperated on some project and then they, they just split and they go for another project and uh, things go on and are super mar marvelous and they are really cool and I just look at them and, and uh, just um, understand that maybe, maybe it's just uh, this individuality and just this uh, need to be labeled somehow. Uh, but it's uh, possible just in the world uh, where everybody are a feminist. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Martina already um, remembered uh, Julie Bena, who was supposed to be here, our English panel speaker. Um, 
and uh, her film uh, Letters from Prague, which is uh, part of this exhibition. I hope you already saw it, and if not, uh, we would like to encourage her to um, to go through the exhibition and, and to watch the film. Um, it was uh, commissioned uh, by uh, Cholopetsky Society in 220. Originally, the task for Gilly as um, a film, but also performance artist, was to do a live act um, in, in Brno, but uh, that was um, uh, in the time or scheduled in the time of the second wave of uh, uh, corona pandemics uh, so um, we decided together to uh, create a, a film instead of a live uh, live performance um, it has uh, three um, connected parts um, and basically in the first one she is uh, kind of uh, um, role-playing uh, Chalupetsky or a, a figure of, a, of an art uh, critic, but basically speaking for herself. She's speaking about a very particular experience she had here in Prague uh, when uh, visiting one uh, exhibition of uh, one male artist um, who was uh, depicting uh, penises, but also vaginas in a kind of um, um, neutralized, objectified, and and, uh, and um, abstracted uh, way, and uh, therefore the, 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 the body uh, and, and the reclaiming the, the female or non-male body is uh, one of the strong uh, uh, messages of, of her film. Um, body or, or uh, physicality, corporeality was uh, also something what Chalupetsky himself uh, connected very strongly with uh, the, the female or women's uh, art. Um, he, um, in several uh, cases, was uh, writing uh, about the uh, fact that, that female art is strongly connected with body and therefore um, women's, uh, are, women are more inclined to work with uh, sculpture or um, relief or, or uh, graphic design. Um, and uh, so he was again kind of like essentializing uh, a, a little bit what, what uh, female art is or actually ar articulating some of the feminist thoughts without, um, of that time without uh, being um, uh, in relation with, with feminism directly. Um, and uh, we would use this as a kind of bridge, like how you perceive the relation of artists to the body in uh, um, contemporary times, um, how uh, this relation can be um, translated through art without being uh, simplifying or, or pejorative or, or um, binary in, in the uh, wrong sense. Uh, maybe again, Maria as, uh, as a practicing artist, but you can of course follow in the channel. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Um, maybe could you... uh, how you see the the um, um, representation of yeah. uh, of body or, or physicality cor cor corporeality in in contemporary art in your work and um, yeah. I'm sorry, guys. Maybe maybe it will be a, a little bit. No, 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 no. I, I understand it now, but uh, maybe it will be better to, for me to switch in, uh, to check. So maybe I will do that. Uh, <laughs> because it's quite complicated to me uh, to un uh, explain that, but okay, uh, <laughs> body parts, uh, yeah. I'm not sure, you know, I, I, for in my work it's uh, connected with magic somehow because, uh, um, yeah, it's in magic because, you know, I, I don't know if it's relative to bodies or because I, I actually, I'm not able to draw anything masculine so maybe <laughs> uh, maybe that's the, uh, the beginning of my work is that I only could um, draw some um, some female uh, organs or bodies or something like this but uh, in general uh, yeah I, I did uh, one um, series which called uh, vagina fantasy which was a mistake uh, i should call it vulva fantasy but doesn't matter and uh, i try uh, try to do uh, those drawings which were hanged on a on a huge uh, wall in a public space and do those um, organs women organs or 
just um, yeah, it, it was it's not just women organs; it's also animal organ, but it was uh, vulvas and vaginas. Uh, was uh, in a super surrealistic way, and it was um, uh, really pretty. And uh, it was in uh, during the Corona time, and I uh, I really want to. Um, uh, put in public space something which is really nice, but also <laughs> uh, some kind of um, uh, like uh, not pornography, you know, just just the organs. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and I, I guess that it will be really nice, and people uh, d don't just uh, understand that it's um, uh, yeah, it's those things. But there's <laughs> there comes a really huge discussion, which was not in a art scene, but it was in a like mainstream because uh, some uh, newspapers uh, have some articles and it was really funny to have those uh, those discussions because I, I love discussions or love to talk with uh, like people who are not relative with art anymore so yeah the really really goal for me was that uh, I was talking with, uh, about that with my aunties and uh, some old women, and they just start to try, uh, start to talk about their vaginas and say say the word vagina in uh, in the <laughs> in um, in a, some family lunch. And uh, I, now I, I saw the dynamics between uncles and aunties and uh, and grandmas and grandparents, and this uh, the, the man was like. Yes. And uh, and but women were super happy that they c could say the word the word that's that is really in uh, like really there but um, it was forbidden somehow uh, until the, until uh, I saw them do those drawings and say hey this is vulvas and vaginas and they realized wow it's not forbidden anymore and we could start to talk about that and it was really nice. Maria was a great follower of uh, Eve Ensler vagina monologues, which actually were performed in the Czech Republic for the first time, like, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. It was a huge shock. And I think that I was surprised that Maria was speaking about her work, vagina fantasies that were actually hang on the art wall in terms of beauty, because I thought that they were beautiful, but they were incredibly subversive, right? And I, I think it's a slippery ground actually to enter when a woman artist starts to speak speak uh, to depict uh, uh, female sexual organs or to work with her own body. But I think that um, it is a very vital uh, strategy to subvert a lot of stereotypes and a lot of taboos. I mean, we can think about Lenka Klodová, who has been working with her own naked body for like 30 years for now. And I think that her work is really far from being essentialist. But of course, it's a slippery ground. And just going back to Chalupetsky, I was just thinking how paradoxical it is that he was uh, thinking in terms of, uh, about uh, female uh, art, in terms of being closer to body and therefore being closer to 3D art, because that's exactly the opposite from most of the stereotypes. I remember from like the end of the 19th century throughout the Second World War because the argument of most at least local art critics was that women actually lack, uh, lack 3D imagination and they can be maybe good painters but definitely not sculptors. So actually maybe we can take this as something progressive in terms of Karl Pesky because he opened a sculptural field to women artists. <laughs> I like that you uh, was, uh, were talking about the, the, the man being ashamed by the, uh, the, the word. And I remembered my interview with, uh, with Adela Matasova I, I made maybe three years ago because I was very interested in these female meetings uh, they organized uh, in Makarska Vinarna uh, the, uh, the end of 70s. Because it was for me a very special moment in check out uh, history because for me it was a feminist movement because they were angry, the women were angry that uh, they couldn't um, be part of the bub artist bubble in, in pubs <laughs> because they had uh, children and they ha it was at home. 
and men were in pubs and uh, ma making contacts and uh, networking, you know. So they, uh, they, they started these meetings and then was, there were some exhibitions, two exhibitions from these meetings and they were very, very uh, criticized by men. But I wanted to say that uh, when I was talking with Adela Matasova, she showed me uh, the, her old uh, uh, drawings from 60s, and there were vaginas, you know. It was really clear, it was like these ruptures in material. And I was asking her, am I seeing what am I seeing, really? And she was like, of course, it's there. And I was shocked because, you know, it was for me like the aha moment for, you know, uh, I mean, for, for my uh, knowing about uh, the, the art scene in the 60s. And I asked her and how it was um, commentated by others uh, on exhibitions and so on. And she said, you know, uh, for, um, mostly they don't see anything. Uh, they, 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 don't, uh, 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 they don't say anything. They were ashamed, I think, a little, and then, or they tried to uh, talk about it as a, in this, in this psychological terms, as a Jungian, Jungian or, or in Freud, Freud terms, without, without using the word and without describing it uh, directly, you know. And this is uh, maybe also my note for this question about female or women art and feminist art because for me same as same as for mariana Placakova, this is a feminist art uh, when you interpret it in this way but uh, of course at that time it wasn't interpreted uh, like this but this is really interesting discussion because uh, i think that we can interpret it not just this really uh, intensive uh, our artworks uh, we can see uh, uh, from the, uh, that time in performance or land art and so on, when you can see some everydayness of women, but also this, this really, uh, uh, you know, uh, this, this, this kind of works as, as graphics or, or drawings where we can also see some feminist um, impulses, I think. And so it was for me very in interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, maybe I would love to add that um, the, the uh, pictures of nude bodies and the nudity at all uh, is like it depends on uh, geographical um, um, position because f for the um, for example we have some it's it might it might be quite shocking in uh, in this. Uh, you know, check uh, check uh, society to see some naked body, less or more. But uh, for example, in the, in the North country like uh, like Finland or or Sweden, there's uh, like a, there will be there will be no shock to see a naked body in a in a public space. And for example, in a, some uh, um, I don't know Asia uh, East Asia uh, countries, there's you know forbidden it, and it's. Uh, um, uh, yeah, how to say that it is uh, like um, like a crime. Yeah, so so maybe it's good to think about this um, when we think about the naked bodies. Yeah, that's all. yeah it's also interesting. So you still want to okay? Yeah. No, it's interesting about the, the the timelines also because the when we come back to Gilles film the exhibition she is mentioning is by a famous or maybe rather in, infamous artist who was mostly active in the 90s and then again informed by all the pre-revolutionary sexism and she discusses how he objectifies the both the vaginas and the penises both the male and uh, and female body and uh, and it somehow draws, it, it leaves such a bad taste that working with, with that in, in contemporary terms uh, by contemporary, either email, female or male artists somehow is in, in this context really, really quite specific. So I'm glad that you, you mentioned the exhibition that uh, it's also interesting, which caused so much uh, criticism, but also so much response through all, so all different people, because pro probably also because it was in public space, but uh, uh, somehow if a 
90s male artist does something similar, it's, it's rarely questioned or it's just sort of somehow there. So it's, um, it's interesting how these timelines kind of um, go, yeah, in, influence each other. And uh, we would like to slowly go uh, towards the uh, end of our debate and, of course, to the invitation, of course, uh, also of the audience to, to uh, pose some questions. Uh, but uh, looking at, uh, we were looking mostly at the past and present, so now there is a little bit of uh, time uh, for the future. Uh, Chalupetsky, in some of his uh, texts, assigned female art with some kind of revival or even uh, salvation. There is quite an interesting um, text that he refused, reproduced with in some variations uh, in the 80s uh, in his new art in Bohemia, but also in a catalog entry on the female sculptor Vera Janouškova, where he was uh, kind of um, looking into the future of, uh, of female art, again, as, as much as we can or cannot use uh, the term. Uh, and let me quote uh, one more time. Uh, Till the whole world of our civilization had remained a male world, female art was not necessarily necessary and it was not even possible. If so, if only, only in the realm of interpretation, interpretation or decoration. However, now that this civilization is so evidently losing the reason for its existence and its purpose, wouldn't it be natural that women, especially with their difference, would also gain a new place in art? Later he uh, quotes André Breton in the text, uh, who states, This crisis is so rapid that if it comes to me, I only find one solution. The time comes when female thought shall be employed in place of male thought, the decadence of which is being completed today in a great chaos. Uh, we thought, of course, again, Kalupetsky is talking in quite binary um, positions uh, and together, together with Breton, uh, but at the same time, we wanted to bring this up uh, now in the time when we are encountering crazy things that we might not only be associated with male positions or even male attributes, but maybe rather patriarchal or toxic, masculine. Uh, uh, we would probably use different terms than, than Chalupetsky was uh, using, but uh, as we all know, we find ourselves in the situation of the Russian war in, in Ukraine, in a situation of climate crisis. Uh, so we wanted to ask you uh, how temporary or contemporary are these thoughts to you of uh, the female takeover that Chalupetsky was uh, kind of suggesting and uh, also he, he noted uh, later in these texts that uh, in, in his view uh, women to somehow restore the world or save the world, <laughs> world uh, need to draw their truth and inspiration and power from elsewhere. But uh, where is that, <laughs> this elsewhere? And uh, <laughs> how, do you, how do you kind of recall these thoughts from, from your perspective today? Any of you? Well, it's interesting because it kind of proves that Chalupetsky was maybe more progressive or inclusive than we all think or at least have been thinking till now and I think that some Czech institutions can maybe teach something from that because um, we have a great example of for instance Galeria Rudolfinum which is a Kunsthalle type of uh, exhibition space which was open 29 years ago so almost three decades on the Czech art scene and Adriana Shimotova who was also curated a few times by Jindřich Chalupický, a wonderful Czech uh, post-war artist, was the only Czech woman artist who had a solo show in Rudolfinum Gallery for the last three decades. So it makes me just wonder, like, you know, what does this mean if we have a very influential exhibition that, uh, exhibition space that um, kind of has been practicing for such a long time, such a great gender uh, imbalance, which is a very smoothly saying, which has been very discriminatory. So maybe it's just a question for some of you to maybe comment on that. And also another example of uh, a space that has been showing a lot of famous feminist artists from abroad, mostly from the West, 
and has been doing everything possible to depoliticize the shows. Uh, when Anna Mendieta had a show in Rudolf Hinnom Gallery like th six, uh, seven years ago, it was repeatedly presented as a non-feminist exhibition, which is for me like um, absolutely impossible to understand how is that possible in the case of an artist who was closely related to the feminist movement in the United States as early as the uh, beginning of the 1970s. So that was just a comment because I find it unbelievable in the beginning of 21st century that this is possible. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> if we live uh, in the bubble of Marie, it would be, it would be possible maybe <laughs> to, like, to change the world thanks to, to feminist uh, art, maybe. <laughs> But uh, I'm not so <laughs> optimistic <laughs> when I see the other bubbles and when I see our, like, mm, I don't know, some politicians or uh, the state of uh, uh, legislative uh, or legisl legislative uh, as in general uh, concerning uh, family law or uh, women in general in Czech, Czech Republic, so I, uh, or not just Czech, Czech Republic, yeah. So I don't know how to, uh, <laughs> how to end it, but uh, also from my perspective as a mother of two little children, I am not uh, um, so sure about, <laughs> about some um, revolutionary steps <laughs> because uh, I, I just feel a lot of uh, system, system problems to, to achieve. Um, my goals <laughs> personally um, and so yeah I don't know I'm not optimistic these days uh, also thanks to all the other happenings in the world so I, I'm not sure if I am able to say uh, anything so positive yeah <laughs> okay so uh, <laughs> I'll try <laughs> Uh, but <laughs> yeah, but um, from my perspective, it was um, the key was always like uh, talk with the guy, guys, and just uh, explain them that uh, it's uh, also good for them to share the care and uh, you know and to be nice and things. Um, but now I'm in an institution and uh, I know that it's not so easy. <laughs> they uh, imagine, so maybe uh, some good message. Um, which I would love to share is uh, that you, you know, just to be nice and, uh, uh, but, but really tough and strong and to do things which you see um, that will, that, uh, the things that will help uh, others, but then you will, uh, you will see a barrier uh, and those barriers are all around us and for example, for all, ar all around me and those barriers are, barriers are not just the guys, but uh, also women. Uh, who, who don't want to have, uh, you know, open, um, open space, uh, for example, in my institution. So the, the, the biggest thing is to, to hold, uh, hold on and uh, still be nice and still explain and maybe there's something will happen. Not, ad not all of it, but just maybe half and those half, you know, we have to count the half to half and maybe we will do it together better, but it's, I don't know, I, I know that it's, you know, hippie, hippie and other things, but, <laughs> uh, but I think uh, it's possible, it's definitely possible, and I see, for, see it, for example, in your <laughs> Kalupetsky society, <laughs> that uh, there are, um, yeah, kindness and love, and also a lot of mistakes all around, but uh, the things that you could react on those mistakes and talk about that, and we have to do it all together. Yeah. I think we can leave it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
No, really, um, thank you uh, again for being here with us. Uh, thank you for the pessimism as well as optimism. I think we also need uh, both or we need uh, skepticism or think critically, but uh, still keeping some hope. And not just for women, but for all uh, uh, people and all genders. And maybe um, this is the moment to also give the chance to the audience um, for any type of reaction, comment, question if there is anyone any question um, there were quite many things which left me a bit confused uh, so I'll mention just two and maybe the first one is my bad that I came late so f maybe sorry for this question but I really need to know uh, about which period did you uh, mostly talked because Jindři Chalupecký lived through, lived through almost the whole 20th century, right? And the 20th century um, feminism, discourse about feminism, conditions for females to work, conditions for females to live, <laughs> drastically change over decades, right? So if you can just maybe <laughs> specify this, because there is, I guess he also changed through, through his life. Uh, and the second one, I was really um, um, confused about um, that there, there, were, um, there were terms feminism uh, somehow overlapped with female art and women art. And I just don't understand this because um, first of all, I think when we speak about feminist art, we also need, that we should define what is it, but it's like a very, it's very wide, right? I think it's difficult and it takes time, but we should know about which terms or, or how do we think about the terms we use. But then sometimes you said f feminist art and then Im immediately you said female art or woman art. And then what does it mean, female art? <laughs> it's, if I can say it in Czech, it's ženské umění. Do we really speak about ženské umění in <laughs> 20... <laughs> Aha, okay, okay, well then, Again, I'm really sorry, it's my bad, but it was really confusing because I really missed the definition. It was a quotation by, uh, from the text uh, by Chalupecki, yeah. Well, yeah, but that's the And we that's were just thinking about what he was uh, thinking uh, by this. It was, you know, the, our question also. Yeah. think about is the fact that Chalupecki himself was actually very strongly somehow um, thinking in this category of female or women's art, um, even like in many cases advocating for, uh, for it um, and um, connecting it with uh, the, the, the corporality or the relation of uh, female art to body. He was even talking about uh, those like actually practical aspects of uh, women, uh, women's life, such as uh, um, taking care of the household and then the family members and even like uh, explicitly talking about the fact that these very practical uh, things are actually taking them a little bit back uh, or, or causing the fact that there is not that many um, uh, women in art. But at the same time, he was rejecting uh, the, the, the political or ideological um, uh, ac activist part of, of feminism or like the, uh, so there is this kind of like uh, paradox that he didn't uh, take seriously the, the, the actually the, the the, the political part of um, uh, or the, 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 the background uh, uh, which we was at the same time describing. Um, and yeah, and, and about your first question, we didn't actually also um, pointed it uh, for ourselves, the, the time period, but mostly we were quoting texts from the 60s, 70s and, and, and 80s by, by Chalupecki. Um, so there is a bit of, uh, of uh, depth 
uh, from our side to investigate the, the earlier uh, writings, uh, but we were ma mainly uh, quoting or, or uh, our thoughts were mainly based on uh, Chalupetsky's text uh, about uh, women um, uh, artists, uh, and mostly he wrote those in, in these decades. Maybe Martina will correct me, but I was I thought that uh, in the parts of the text where he wrote about uh, female art, he is using this term. So we were also discussing what does it mean. Uh, he was quite constant in it that he wasn't. I didn't really see a lot of development, although he was writing it in different times. But a lot of them, as, as uh, Teresa mentioned, were that we were quoting are from the 80s, and we were really interested in this kind of transition of the unofficial scene before uh, the revolution in normalization and then how it influenced the now 90s that somehow are maybe still influencing us or this, this kind of timeline. But uh, yeah, I think Kalopetsky tended to maybe generalize a bit that he was also somehow quoting himself in, in these texts quite often that he would use some argument that he later used in another text by another artist, but he developed it a little bit more, but not really in terms of that. I, I didn't really see how his take on this would really change a lot in time. I, I don't know if Martina sees it differently, but yeah. Thank you so much for a great discussion. I have a question about Chalupetsky and feminism and maybe turning it around a little bit because as you explained, all of you, it's kind of paradoxical and very undecidable to say where he was, was he a feminist, what was his opinion about women? Maybe you can think about it in a set of um, what parts of his work could be used for us today as feminists in feminist thought and practice and maybe not looking only at the text where he's talking endlessly and repeating himself, as you just said, about female artists and what they did, but maybe other parts of his work where he's not even discussing this question. Are there any conceptual innovations in his work which you would think would be useful for feminist thought and practice today, which we could build on? Thank you. Mm. I think some of his very general thoughts that we are discussing a lot through this entire exhibition, uh, one of his primary thoughts that he's really living with his entire career is that art cannot be deprived of its political situation or context, or it cannot be deprived of life. He was really connecting it a lot to the lives, the personal lives of the artists. Here again come the paradoxes, because then he, when he writes about women, he says, well, they are much more informed by the personal. But for instance, in this reading room, if you read pretty much about anybody, he would write about their personal stories also of, of uh, male artists. But, uh, but this kind of engagement, I think, this general engagement, and he, he was really very much opposed to art just being something aesthetic, something decorative. So I think that's something that definitely was, uh, we can be still somehow informed by this. And uh, also, for instance, there is uh, this, this document, um, um, this TV documentary where he was commenting on a 68 Biennale in uh, Bratislava and he was uh, discussing how an exhibition in that time needs to be seen as an environment, not as uh, just artworks by themselves, as individual artworks, but as a complex environment, which is all these things are part of it. So uh, yeah, so some of these things I, I, I thought were quite uh, contemporary and, uh, and in terms of uh, Feminism, it could be, um, yeah, it could be relevant to us, yeah. Well, maybe also going back to numbers, because I think it is really significant how many women artists he has been surveying, writing about, or even exhibiting. You know, I mean, Galeria Rodolfino is definitely not the only institution which has this, like, gender bias politics. But um, I was actually reading this afternoon parts of Chalupetsky's uh, book on Marcel Duchamp. <laughs> and what I find maybe, but of course this is reading in between the lines, what I find appealing and intriguing is that he did spend or he did focus in a lot of different aspects of the notion of androgyny. Of course, he did not think about it in terms of kind of breaking away from the gender dichotomy 
uh, in terms of like, let's say, non-binary identity, but there are hints. And I think that maybe this is something what we can take as a motivation to think about non-binary identity, even in terms of contemporary art and even like, our, you know, politics that is surrounding us in the society per se. So, um, of course, you know, when he was thinking or writing about androgyny, he approached it explicitly as this kind of romantic uh, term related to spirituality and religion and uh, rituals, etc. But I think that there is something behind it because when he was writing about Marcel Duchamp, uh, let's say cross-dress as Rose la vie, there is something which I think is very um, intriguing even in terms of how contemporary artists, both male and female, uh, deal with who they are in terms of their personal sexual da -da -da identity. So maybe there's that's something about that. And all, you know, I mean, if um, uh, Karina was quoting also from uh, his very famous essay from 1977, I think, which is called Dusha Androgyna, the spirit of uh, the androgyne. So, I mean, there, there, there is like, you know, in, in his writing, something what uh, maybe can be for us um, like an appeal to think more about um, this aspect. So, but maybe he would disagree. Maybe he would just stick with androgyny as this kind of romantic uh, term. Of course, you know, very much also proposed by, or proposed, like used by surrealists, for instance, but maybe there is something in there. Um, hello, thank you for this. Um, I was interested in some like historical gossip and uh, so what do we know about Halopetsky as a husband? Now we are missing yeah. Tomáš Pospíšil. <laughs> exactly, I mean, uh, Tomáš Pospíšil, our co-curator of this exhibition is the one who has all the gossip. I, I'm afraid I will have to point you to him but um, as far as I know I mean it was quite complicated the relationship he was he was married to a very wonderful poet Irina Haukova we are also through this exhibition trying to bring uh, one of her poems up and I think she would deserve another huge project <laughs> to, to get, have a look at her work. And I think, yeah, they were both very individualist for that time. And she was uh, pretty much the only female member of the group 42. So I think her position also wasn't easy. And as, as I kind of read, but of course I have no clue about it uh, myself from my own experience. Uh, I had the feeling that, yeah, that she might have been a little too individualist and a little too strong for, for that time, perhaps. But, uh, but on the other hand, uh, there we are, we also have here the elegy that he wrote, she wrote for Kalupetsky from when he was passing in the hospital until she was writing it until two years later after his death and it's such a powerful poem unfortunately we just have it in in Czech but for for those of you who can you can read it and we will we promise to get it translated one one day and I think yeah she shows somehow through this poem both this both this independence as herself as an artist, as a as a person, but at the same time this kind of <clears throat> this kind of compassion, or that I feel that when she's looking back at their life together, it's it's really moving the way she writes. And so yeah, so I guess we can only read in between the lines there a little bit. Rado was speaking about gossip, so, so maybe I can just add one anecdote. Um, we, we, we mentioned uh, Adela Matasova, who is now 81, 82 year old woman artist who has a show in uh, the gallery of the Central Bohem in the Central Bohemian Gallery, Gask in Kutná Hora. Beautiful exhibition, which will be accompanied sooner or later by a big monographic um, uh, catalog. And uh, I spoke to her the other day and I asked her, well, 
you must have also met Chalupetsky. And she said, yeah, 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 you know, we have been meeting in some stores. He was shopping all the time. I was shopping when my children were all small. And then she, was, she started to laugh and she said, well, I remember one very kind of like um, obscure moment when he called her and she was not at home and left a message and she called him back and his wife, Yerina Haukova, said, well, Yindrich is busy right now. He's cleaning the floor with, with sauerkraut. And we were kind of speculating what kind of cleaning <laughs> strategy this is. So, and I want to say this, that he was also, as Adela Matasova would put it, very emancipated man, even in terms of division of labor. So that's just something to kind of add. <laughs> I don't know if you can if you clean the floor with sauerkraut, but definitely in Chalupetsky's household, that was the way how to do it. <laughs> yeah. I think this was actually one of also one of Tomáš's anecdotes that even he, when he came, he was obsessed by the floors somehow that he came to some artist's household. I don't remember who it was, and they had the carpet kind of sticking out of the floor. And before they he would enter any kind of conversation, he went to repair it. <laughs> so. <laughs> Are there any further questions? Yeah, hello. I wanted to ask you if you were talking about the video letter from Prague from Julie Benny, and you were talking about the connection from between the past and the contemporary. So if you can uh, give me a clue, where did you find it? Or I did wanted to ask Julie, but she's not here, so maybe you have better eyes or ears than me. But you mean in the film or generally? Yeah, in the film. Well, I think in the film she tries to kind of stem from this parody of Kalupetsky or of, of this white male critic, but then very, very soon she just jumps into the contemporary. I think the film, in, in my reading, but she would respond better definitely, is mostly about her own situation as an artist, as a, as a woman artist, as a mother, and, and the way she perceives things around her and also she's in this quite specific situation of being a French artist living here and, and also the whole notion of, of, of feminism or of other uh, um, um, thoughts are really different so I think she's also trying to, that's why we also invited her uh, to comment on, on this on also in this whole history as, as a foreigner, as someone who is coming from a really different uh, cultural and political situation, and uh, that's, that's what I read in the film. Maybe you can, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm sorry I wasn't here uh, at the beginning of the discussion uh, or uh, the panel, but um, I assume that there was a question about if we can label uh, some. Uh, or women artists as feminist artists, so back to history. And uh, <laughs> I think we can do it, but I don't have uh, uh, the professional <laughs> argumentation for this. So I, I was just uh, wondering if you can provide me with uh, some more uh, discussion about this and uh, some more arguments about if we can label something back to history as feminist, even if uh, the, the artist or weren't uh, self-proclaimed feminists. Maybe it's Pe Pe Petra was mentioning um, the, the Adela Matasova's uh, uh, work from the 60s. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, you, you classify them as uh, as feminist. Uh, for me personally, it's questionable, or I. I would love to also read it in this way, but um, I'm not personally sure because uh, um, uh, there was uh, back then uh, really kind of coldness, let's say, toward, toward uh, um, proclaiming um, themselves, the, the, the woman uh, artist, uh, as feminist. We spoke about the, some of the, the reasons or the, the historical context um, of that. But at the same time, uh, we definitely can see um, some um, of um, uh, the, the like, like strong messages or awareness or, or um, uh, sensitivity towards uh, issues and, and problematics that uh, 
in that same time would have been uh, ar articulated as uh, as feminist. So I don't know how to. Uh, I uh, I'm aware uh, that it, this is a kind of um, um, uh, provocative proclamation, you know, about this is strong uh, point of view. But uh, I think this is important point of view that uh, we can discuss the interpretation of those uh, works, uh, from which position we won't like to interpret them. Uh, if we can uh, find there something which we can, uh, what we can uh, name as feminists, I think this is like the uh, invitation to discussion for me. You know, it's not label. Uh, and uh, I, I would recommend you the text by Mariana Placáková from uh, Sešit pro umění a uh, teorie a příbuzné zóny, where she also developed this kind of interpretation or this maybe more deeply is this, this is uh, describing her way to this uh, opinion and um, uh, for me personally, uh, regarding the Adela, it's, uh, it's uh, very, very provocative, yeah, but uh, uh, there was some important moment in her that she, when she described her own uh, <laughs> angriness, you know, uh, towards the situation of men. And, uh, and she then, uh, like she said, that this uh, drawing wasn't like uh, at the moment. Uh, uh, con um, conscious, uh, <coughs> wasn't con conscious about uh, the erotic uh, <coughs> uh, or sexual or gender uh, question uh, in it. But like, likely she, she uh, was thinking about it and she realized that at that moment she was really angry, you know, so it was also an interpretation by psychology, by her. But I liked her moment when she said, I was really angry on um, man that I can't be in the part of the sea because I have, I'm at home with children and we wanted with other women to make something. And this is for me a really feminist moment, you know? So it, it's why I was certain more brave to <laughs> make this kind of interpretation of her works then. But I think this is really Nice question to discuss. <laughs> no, I just uh, think that, um, you know, for example, Esther Krumbachova was a re really icon to me and work with a uh, super, for me, like, feminist, feminist topic, said about herself that she's not feminism. So I guess that we should respect that because I think I, I see a lot of feminism move movement during the you know the history, so they could decide that on their own. So we respect that. Well, I think that um, the example of Adela Matasova, which she is here actually tonight with us, but um, it's interesting because I think that a lot of living artists of her generation, maybe younger ones like Milena Dopitova, retrospectively started to think about their work and their position as feminist. But in the moment. Uh, when actually these issues started to be discussed on the Czech art scene, they were very, very uh, careful about being labeled as such. But that's of course no easier with living artists. But I believe as an art historian that art history is a speculative discipline. And I also believe in the post-structuralist post turn that we as interpreters actually have some possibility to not necessarily label, but understand some work of art as disruptive, even in terms of gender. So I think that um, uh, we should be very careful about how to do it, but I think that if a work of art, even of a non-living artist, has some potential in the time of her life to disturb some, some patriarchal bias, I think that it is legitimate, 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 legitimate. Uh, to, to think about uh, such work in terms of feminism. Uh, so, just nothing to say. Thank you. Let's
Thank you so much for coming tonight.